just for clarity's sake, I want to walk you through how we were able to do a $94,000 launch on a private community that continued to do over $300,000. Now, I reference we because I did not do this alone. I did partner with a friend, a buddy, another YouTuber named Annie Hefel. Before we even had the idea for launching a private community, we essentially had to come up with an idea for what we could pitch for not only his audience, but my audience as well, because we both had similar niches, but they were different formats. And we both came to the conclusion that videos, basically faceless YouTube channels, not being on camera, was the biggest trending topic at the time for YouTube, because that's where most of our traffic was, or still is, I should say, is YouTube. And you see a lot of these groups now, and a lot of people promoting YouTube automation, faceless channels, how to do this, that, um, and they've been around for a long time, but the first generation was essentially all about rain videos and fireplaces that loop for six, ten hours. Those only worked when you were the first one to do it. There were so many people that were copycatting to do that, and it was not working. But there is a way to create faceless content and make an absolute killing. Most people right now promote how to do it for ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars, just in general, um, and they only give you one or two options if they even give you the option to create content. So what me and Andy did is we came up with a system to allow you to choose your niche but in a selected area. So we had about 50 to 60 options. So it wasn't just you're stuck with this type of content. We gave you plenty of choices and that was essentially the system we were gonna follow to help people create their own faceless channel and content without being on camera, without using their own voice, essentially being a non-personal brand, just completely detached from it. Once we created that system and the foundation, that is when we started to promote the launch of the actual community two months before it actually launched. So almost every single day, Andy or myself was essentially creating content to promote the launch of the new community on how to create a faceless channel. And we built up an email list specifically of people interested in how you can create this type of content, how you can essentially do faceless YouTube. Once we built up that list on the first month, we continued to do it on the second month, but after the first month, we then would hop on calls, 15 minute calls with these potential clients to kind of get an understanding of where they're at financially, where they're at mentally, and their experience with YouTube because you have to qualify people before letting them in Otherwise, you will just have a cessed pool of people that is just a massive, massive headache. So make sure if you're trying to launch your own private community that you qualify people before letting them in, especially, especially if you're paying or charging, I should say, high ticket. At the time, we launched it at $5,800, maybe less, but I do know the price ended up being $5,800 for the most part following the launch. And we made sure that we came up with a list of people who checked all the boxes. Especially at the beginning, you want to make sure that you're getting the best of the best students in. People who will actually take action. Otherwise, if you have a bunch of students that aren't taking action and aren't even following the course material, just throwing money and assuming that it's all going to work out, nobody wins. They don't have a successful channel and you don't have any testimonials or successful students to promote your own foundation here. So that was step one. Once launch came to be, we would hop on one more call saying, we would like to invite you to the community, to our private group. Here's the link. Once you make payment, you are in. If you don't make payment by this date, here's the deadline. We essentially put you back on the waiting list for the next session because we did have a limit number of spots that people could jump in. At the time, we capped it at 20. 
But since the demand was so high, we did bump it up and let five more people in, so we were essentially capped at 25. This went on for three months, and then we would cycle in new people every three months. Basically, once a quarter, we would let in a new batch of students. Now, from that two months launch, getting everything prepped, we made $94,000. Now, mind you, that's not all profit because, again, it was me, it was Andy, and we did have some other people below us as well. We had a couple of VAs. We had a couple of um, team builders, basically people that would help us find in mass editors, thumbnail designers, script writers, obviously not voiceover artists because those are pretty easy to find, but essentially the whole system that we would use to create a fully systematized YouTube channel for each individual person. When you have to do that 25 times, you really need to refine the system. Otherwise, it just becomes a massive headache. So it was not pure profit. There was a lot of people on the team to make this happen. Now, at the time, Andy had, I believe, 300,000 subscribers. So his audience was fairly bigger than mine. Mine's barely at 25,000 right now and he was at 300,000 so obviously majority of the traffic came through his side my job was to basically get everybody in get them prepared and i would hop on one-on-one -on -one calls with everybody as soon as they jumped in that way they knew the expectations not only what they expected from us but we expected from them that way we were all on the same page to get the ball rolling when you don't set that expectation line that's where a lot of cracks start to show and people start to demand more and more of you because when you, regardless, low ticket, high ticket, people expect more than they pay for. And that, that happens more with low ticket than high ticket. I've noticed over the years, uh, if you sell something for $7, they expect $1,000 worth of context and they want to put in minimal effort. And it's kind of the opposite with high ticket where they will pay you more and expect less. So I honestly recommend if you are setting up your own private community, you have low ticket and high ticket offers in both front and back end. Definitely is going to make a massive difference for you, especially if you are trying to systematize it and have a larger community. It all depends on what your end goal is here and what your specific skill set is or the skill set of the person that you're partnering with. Once we got the ball rolling, we were able to refine it more after the first batch of people after the second batch and the third batch to keep the ball rolling and get things rolling even smoother for essentially the next round of students from there i would follow up with each previous class to make sure that they're staying on top of things and keeping the ball rolling on their end because running a youtube channel is not something you can just pay money and let it do its own thing you definitely have to keep the ball rolling you have to keep everybody in line it's a ship that you have to keep in check Otherwise, if you hire a bunch of people to do a job and you never check the quality of their work, if you're never inspecting it, they're just going to do whatever they want. So that was my job as well, is to make sure that people were keeping on top of their, their teams to make sure quality was staying up. Otherwise, if you are paying the bare minimum for content, that is where things start to not look so good because you get what you pay for. So... My job was to make sure that everybody is running smooth and keeping up to date on their SOPs. If you're not familiar, it's basically standard operating procedures. If you, and if you're not familiar with that, um, easiest way I can break that down is um, what is your branding? You know, what colors is your brand? Make sure if you're doing creative captions that that is your branding. Uh, specific rules. If you're doing a transition, make sure you're doing this transition, this one, or this one. This type of sound effect, this type of sound design etc right just standard operating procedures standard rules of play for your content for how your business is run and how you want your youtube channel to be perceived the other thing is you need to really really understand what what your end goal is here for youtube an easy way to explain this is is are you creating youtube specifically to grow a following specifically to make money or are you are you actually interested in the topic you're talking about and you just do it because you enjoy it most people say the exact same thing when it comes to youtube i want to make ten thousand dollars a month i want to have a hundred thousand subscribers and those are both 
excuse me, those are both goals that happen after the fact. It's not an actual thing you can do. You can't just say, all right, I made $10,000. All right, I got 100,000 subscribers. What you can control is how many videos are you putting out every single week? What is the quality of that video? How can you improve that? If you have a goal on number of vi uh, views, let's say you want 100,000 views a month. Perfect. If your average video is getting 5,000 views, you need to make 20 videos a month to hit 100,000 on average. Simple math, simple actionable steps that you can take and goals that you can control. So that was my framework is, is, is essentially focusing on what you can control, not the outcome that you can't control because that's what everybody focuses on and that's where they start to lose sight, lose hope really fast. What you need to implement is make sure you have not only actionable steps that they can take right now, but how they can get their first win as quick as possible. A lot of people, most people online, have never made a dime online. If you can help them make their first $1, $5, $10, that is something they will never forget, and they will get more excited about that than they will making getting their first paycheck from a real 9-to-5 job where it's $500, $1,000, $2,000, right? Even though it's a small amount, it's money that you made yourself through no other entity except online. And it's a feeling you can't forget. But you can't stop there. You have to get them their first win. You have to get them their second win. You have to get them their third win. Once you can do that, you can essentially have them keep the ball rolling themselves. You say, great, now you know what the process is. Keep the ball rolling from there. To keep everybody engaged, because a lot of people do fall off and get bored after a while, shiny object syndrome is very common in the online space, and you kind of have to incentivize people to keep taking action in their own business. So what we did is we made sure that even if you weren't in that certain section, like if we're in class two or class three, anybody can join that's in the community. And we would have rewards based off engagement, based off of action taking, and based off of just growth in general, right? If we can see that you are posting consistently and you are continuing to improve your quality or whatever your niche is, just make sure that people are continuing to work on their business or whatever it is that your niche is, give them another way to win. And in our case, it was once a month, we would do first, second, and third prizes. First prize was usually something like a branded hoodie or a t-shirt or a hat, kind of like the, uh, the ball cap I got right there. <laughs> That's just a hat I was just testing out with a personal branding. It's not super expensive to do, and your audience, your your community loves it. On top of those small prizes, once a quarter, we would also do big prizes, $500,000 cash prizes, but we made sure to make the rules very, very clear so nobody got upset if they felt their work ethic was higher than other people because some people even if they put in more work, are not necessarily putting in the same effort of work, right? So eight hours of hard work is not the same as two hours of quality work. A lot of people don't understand that they are just spinning their tires, thinking they're doing a lot of work when really they're not doing anything. They're just making it seem like they're working. So when it comes to creating your own community through school, that's the platform that we used. We ended up, we tried so many others. Um, Builder All. We've done ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is great for funnels. They do offer memberships in the back end, but it's not good. Uh, not good at all. Uh, Facebook groups, terrible. We've we've done several Facebook groups in the past. And Kajabi, Kartra, like I said, there's, there's a lot we've tried. And we came across School. And that platform is extremely helpful not only is it simple for you as the creator but for anybody jumping in they can learn that platform within five minutes of just scrolling through and navigating the platform not only via desktop but also from uh, mobile so it works on android and apple when we first started there was no app it was just only you could access it via mobile through the website but now there's an app so it's even easier and things are just getting better from there and the simplicity the fact that there's community and course content all in the same place 
You can also add events with the calendar. You can use Google, uh, Google Meet, and you can also use Zoom. But if you have another platform that you want to link in the calendar, you can do that as well. You can meet up in real life if you want to set up real life meet and greets. On top of that, there is gamification. No other course um, platform out there has gamification. And what I mean by gamification is anytime you engage, so if I make a comment or a post on something and somebody likes my piece of content or my comment, I get a point. The more points you have, the, that's how you level up. When you level up, you get access to more content, more perks, and more rewards. For instance, in my free community, you get access right off the bat on how you can build your brand and how to create a community. But if you want to access the YouTube Sprint, that does require level two. You do have to get in there and engage with people to get access to that. If you want access to my free templates that are for outreach, for emails, and there's, there's a lot of templates on there, <laughs> at least 30. If you want access to that, you have to be level three. If you want to do a one-on-one -on -one call with me, which I generally charge a good chunk of change for, I give you that for free if you make it to level six. Now, mind you, that's a lot of engagement. So that that's essentially a reward for those who are engaging and, and putting in an effort in the community to not only better themselves, but help those out around them. Because so many people jump in a course, jump in a community, and all they do is take and consume. They don't ask questions in public chat. They just send it directly to you because they think they're the only ones that has this problem. Entice them to create it as a post and answer that question because I assure you, 30 other people have that exact same question. You, you asking that question in a public forum is going to cause them to answer or know the answer right away because you've already answered it. Or even better, when somebody else asks it three months down the road and we've already answered it for you, they know the answer from there. So it's all about, it's all about keeping people active, keeping people engaged, and making it fun. Customer experience is something a lot of people forget about. And once you set up your own community, your own school group, build it around customer experience because if you don't see it from their perspective, only your perspective, that's where people, a lot of people get lost. When we did our $94,000 launch, that was all through how we set it up strategically, how we kept people coming in was through the customer experience. Keep both of those in line because you don't want to just have a successful launch and then nothing else after. You want to keep the ball rolling. You want to get testimonials. You want to get successful results for students so you can keep turning the wheel and getting more and more people in. It's a win-win for everybody. They get what they want, and you make profit from your community, from your skills, or partnering with somebody else, their skills, while you just manage and keep everything smooth and in line. If you have any questions, seriously, check out this video right here. It is my full 90-minute masterclass on exactly how we did school, how we did the launch. Everything that you might have a question to, it's going to be in that video. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.